most important topics and it's something that's missing so much in today's church is the preaching of the cross. And that's why during this incoming week, I want to draw your attention to the truth. The Apostle Paul speaks much about the cross, speaks about the preaching of the cross. He speaks about the offense of the cross. He speaks about the power of the cross. He speaks about the victory of the cross. And over these nights, we want to see what he taught about the cross of Jesus Christ and the power and the attraction that the cross has for the people of God. <clears throat> if you have your Bible this morning, <coughs> I want to read some verses in the little book of Ruth. The little book of Ruth, the lovely little book in the Old Testament. There's always something attractive about Ruth because that's what you call my wife. <laughs> the little book of Ruth in chapter 1. <clears throat> and we're reading at verse number 1. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of the two sons, Malon and Chilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah, and they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the woman uh, of Moab. The name of the one was Orpha, and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelled there about ten years. And Malin and Chilion died also, both of them, and the woman was left of her two sons and their husbands. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law, that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab how the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Then on down the chapter to verse number 19. <clears throat> so they too went until they came to Bethlehem, and it came to pass when they were come to Bethlehem that all the city was moved about them. And they said, Is this Naomi? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me Naomi, seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me? So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of the barley harvest. Amen. And God will bless the reading of his inspired and fallible word for his namesake. I'm sure I don't need to remind the people of Kilkeel this morning that the book of Ruth is one of only two books in the Bible that bear the names of women. The other is Esther. Now, we know that there is a, a third book. While it doesn't bear the name of a woman, it is addressed to a woman it's, and her children. It's Second John. But once it, what's interesting about the books of Ruth and Esther they're both essential and important when it comes to tracing our lineage uh, from the Word of God. Because one of them, Ruth, she traces the lineage of the Messiah back to David. 
Esther, she gives us the observation on the preservation of the Jewish nation. So both ladies who have written books are important when we want to trace the lineage in the Old Testament. And I want this morning to take this uh, book of Ruth. It's a, a well-known book. It's a familiar book. But there's so much beautiful truth in this book, and especially at this season of the year. I'm only going to say two things this morning. Now, if I did that uh, in Ballykeen, somebody would say, we're going to get out early. He's only got two points. But don't just jump ahead of anything this morning. I just want to take two simple things from the book of Ruth that are applicable and ought to be applicable and heart-searching for every one of us who profess the name of the Lord Jesus this morning. I want to say a word about the road to ruination. And then I want to say a word about the road to restoration. All contained in this first chapter of the book of Ruth. The road to ruination. It's interesting when you see the situation surrounding the story of Naomi and Ruth because there was a famine in the land. That's the first thing we have when we think about the road to ruination. There was a famine in the land. Now, the, road, the reason for a famine is given to us in the book of Deuteronomy on the 11th chapter, verses 10 through 17. The Lord had promised Israel a land flowing with milk and honey. But in the same verses, God reminds them that if there was a turning away from following the Lord, the heavens would be shut up and famine would follow. So obviously the background of the book is about a people who had forsaken the Lord and caused a famine in the land. It's interesting that when we speak about a famine in the land, that we cannot even today or realize the spiritual famine that there is in our own land. Because there is a spiritual famine in the land. And not only is there a spiritual famine in the land, but many of God's people are spiritually dried up, going through the motions, following the traditions, without the reality of what God wants to do in the midst of the spiritual famine in our land. I mean, we're in a society today where places don't want the truth. I have been, I remember, I may have told you on one of my visits, I remember uh, going to preach in a church that wasn't a Baptist church, so you're all right. <coughs> and when I went into the hall, the fellow said to me, what church do you go to? I said, the Baptist he says, oh. I said, well, what's wrong? Have I said something wrong? He says, no. He says, the minister doesn't allow anybody from the Baptist to preach here, and he's coming tonight. I says, well, if you won't tell him, I'll not tell him. And sure enough, then he came. 
and they sat at the back. And I announced the opening hymn, and would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. And if looks could have killed me, I'd have dropped dead in the pulpit. And as the service went on, it got hotter until eventually he got up halfway through the service and banged the door behind him. That wasn't in Africa. That was in Northern Ireland. In Northern Ireland. As famine in the land. The pastor had already quoted in his prayer today that in the last days perilous times would come for the church. There will be a departure from the faith. And how true is that in our society today? a spiritual famine in the land. But I want not only to see the famine, but I want you to see the family. Because when you look at the family, you discover that the father's name is Elimelech. Elimelech means God is king. So the father of this family has confessed, God is my king. God is my king. His wife's name is Naomi. And that means my beloved or pleasant one. The sons were called malon, meaning sickly or illness. Chilean means pining or wasting away. Now, when you begin to see this family, I want you to see the family this morning. God is my king. God is my king. Naomi, my beloved, our pleasant one. Their abode is in Bethlehem, Judah. Bethlehem means <coughs> house of bread. Judah means praise. Now, when you gather up all the meaning of the names in this first chapter of the book of Ruth, here we have a man who professes God is my king. And yet this man takes his family away from the house of bread and from the house of worship. Can you imagine a man who professes Jesus Christ is Lord and yet he's willing to gather up his family and move them away from the house of God, the house of bread? and move them away from the place of praise and fellowship, and furthermore, to move them to the land of Moab. Moab, that country that was under the curse. Moab, when we trace its foundation, it was born out of the sin committed by Lot's daughter when they made their father drunk and lay with him. See the picture that's here for us this morning. A famine in the land. A family, a professing family 
who didn't have much thought for their children when they took them from the house of bread and the house of praise and took them to the far country. What a responsibility. Because when he took them to the far country, it had detrimental effect upon his family. He himself died. His two sons died. Can I take a moment here this morning and ask you this? What do you think about your family? What do you think about your family? I mean, can your family not only see the testimony that you say you have, but can they see you practice it on a daily basis? You know, think of the importance of their children. Children are important. I cannot understand, and I can speak freely because I'm not familiar with your church. I'm familiar with my church, but I'm not familiar with your church. But why is it in so many of our churches we don't bring our children out onto the preaching of the gospel? We got this idea, you know, well, they go to school tomorrow. If you visit them after church, you'll discover the kids are not in bed. I've discovered that over the years. You say, what can a little child take in? What can he take in? <clears throat> I remember my, one of my grandchildren, and, you know, I have 11 grandchildren, believe it or not. Makes you want to leave the country at Christmas. And one of them, especially when one of my sons, he, he, loves, he loves arguing with the kids, even yet. He loves arguing with the children. He was arguing one day with one of the, grand, one of the grandsons. He was only six or something. And in the middle of the argument, you know, everything he said, the grandson was arguing back to him. And he says, my son said to him, listen, son, don't you argue with me for I know everything. And the grandson said, you don't know everything. And my son looked at me and said, I do know everything. And the grandson said, you don't know everything. And my son just looked at him and he says, what do I not know? My grandson's reply was, you don't know when Jesus Christ is coming back. <laughs> now what I'm trying to get over to you this morning is this. He was only six where did he hear about the coming of Jesus Christ? It wasn't sitting at home with the television. It was in the house of God with the people of God under the preaching of the gospel of the grace of God. See what happens now. Here's a man, and he has lost the vision and concern for his family. And he's willing to move them from the house of God and the worship of God and the praise of God and take them to places where God's name will not even be mentioned. What a plight. You know, one of the greatest impressions made upon me when I was growing up on the Shankill Road living in the world was going in late at night and seeing my mother and father sit just round the wee fire with the Bible's open before God. What an example. The family. Parents, listen to the story of Ruth. You may have gone cold. You wouldn't say that you're spiritually in the far country, but in your own heart, maybe backslidden. Think of your kids, will you? Think of your family. And then you see the failure. The failure on this road to ruination. When they left the house of bread for the land of the curse, they didn't intend to stay there. 
They just went there to sojourn. Go down in the Moab for a month or two. There's a bit of a famine in the land, and we could make a few, a few pounds down in Moab, and then we'll come back. And then they discovered something that we all need to discover this morning, and it's this, it's easier to get away from God than it is to get back. Remember what it said about the Lord Jesus when he was just 12? It took one day for them to lose him, but it took three days to find him. And it's always more difficult to get back than it is to get away. You could think of some of the men who tried to run away from God. You could think of Elijah. And Elijah tried to run from God, remember, when Jezebel came after him. And what he do? He sat down and he wanted to die. We think this morning of Jonah. Jonah tried to run away from God and finished in the belly of the fish. We think of Abraham who went down into Egypt from the altar in Genesis chapter 12 and he brings Hagar back from Egypt and now the trouble and the result of Abraham's going from the altar is in our world tonight in the Middle East. That's what all the problem in the Middle East comes from Abraham leaving the altar and going down and bringing Hagar back and then having a child of Hagar. See the difficulty and the danger. Peter denied the Lord, and he went bitterly. Let me ask you this morning. Do these scriptures apply to you? Do they apply to me? I have made my testimony. God is my king. But I never bring my children to where God has presented as king and preached as king. Never do it. Think of the road to restoration just for a minute or two this morning and keep me on the clock there all night, even though I can't see it. <clears throat> Notice back, so just a few things very, very quickly on the road to restoration. How was she going to get back into the place of blessing? Because when she comes back, as we read in the Scripture, she come back. She went out full, and she come back empty. She come back, and her experience was a bitter experience. But when she was down in Moab, she heard. She heard. You see, the message she heard was this, that God has visited his people. And when she heard the message, there was a divine awakening within her soul. Oh, wherever God is doing a work, get in on it and enjoy the blessing. And she hears, God has visited the house of bread. He's in the house. And when she hears the message, it awakens her soul and creates a desire to get back to where she left off. Price was big. She had lost her family. But God and grace was visiting. And when Naomi hears, she takes Ruth, and she says, if God is there, that's where we ought to be. We ought to be where God is. Not only did she hear, how shall they hear without it? It's important that they hear. And it's important what they hear. Not only did she hear, but she heard that the Lord had visited his people. 
And when she, Lord, when she heard that the Lord had visited his people again, in a sense, she was like the prodigal son. She says, what am I doing here when God's at work in Bethlehem? What am I doing here in all my sorrow when I could be enjoying the presence and the blessing of God in Bethlehem, Judah? And I need to get back to where I ought to be. Back to where I ought to be so that I can enjoy what God wants to do. God wants to bless, and I need to get back, and I need to get in on it and enjoy what God's doing. Enjoy what he's doing. And then you see there was some presentation because she not only heard, and she not only heard that the Lord had visited his people, but she heard that he had come to give, a, give them bread. He wasn't selling it. He was giving it. It was free. My, the blessing was there for her to enjoy what God was providing. Watch what she does now. Ruth came back in the right manner. She was grievously sorrowful for what she'd done. She came back in the right manner. She came back to the right place. She came back to the house of bread. And she came back at the right time because it was the beginning of the barley harvest. But hey, she had to get back. You know, sometimes we sing that hymn, Where is the blessedness? I knew when first I sought the Lord. Can you remember those days? Those days when you were on fire for God. But somehow, the fire is almost gone. The flame is almost out. And this morning, God speaks again. Get back to where you started. Get in to what God is doing and enjoy the blessing God is pouring out among his people. Get back. You know, one night I was preaching away up in County Tyrone. And I preached, and I, I was speaking from the end of this book of Ruth. And some months after that, I was at the Slavic Conference, most of you know I've served on the Board of Slavic Mission for some, I've been traveling for, for 30 years now in and out of Eastern Europe. And when we were up at the conference and there was a break, we were going in for tea. And there was this girl came over and she said to me, I'm glad to see you here today. I said, why? Well, she said, I was at County Tyrone the night you preached on Ruth. And you preached on Ruth coming back to Bethlehem, Judah. She said, I was sitting in the meeting that night. My name's Ruth. And I'm, I was away from God. And she says, the next morning, I went and sought the pastor out and came back to the Lord. Back to the Lord. My name is Ruth. 
you could get back to where we ought to be. If the church of Jesus Christ could only get back to where it ought to be, we could impact this society for good in these dark days in which we're living. I don't know why the Lord led a message like that in my heart this morning. But there may be someone and you've drifted or you're starting to drift and God wants to stop you and he wants to restore you and he wants to bless you if you'll come back. Oh, may God challenge us this morning from his word for his name's sake. The hymn is 387.